Crime is universal, and if you don't believe so, this shocking case from Pakistan will be all the proof you need. Starting in the early 2010s, two brothers' crimes horrified the country so much that new laws were proposed as a response. For years, they went around digging up corpses and eating them and ended up being arrested for it multiple times. But who were they? Why did they do it? And where are they now? All these questions and more will be answered in today's episode of True Crimes Around the World. In early 2011, a young woman in Pakistan, 24-year-old Syra Parveen, tragically passed away after a battle with throat cancer. Her family buried her in a graveyard near Darya Khan, a small town close by the village where they lived in western Pakistan's Sargoda division. The day after they buried her, still grieving, the family went to visit Syra's grave only to notice that the soil looked different than a day before. It had been pressed in, so the family opened the grave to see what had happened, and to their horror, the grave was empty. Someone had taken the young woman's body. Thinking the body had been stolen for black magic purposes due to their Pakistani culture, the family went to the police who then asked the graveyard's caretaker about the matter. He said he had seen two men, brothers Arif and Farman Ali, enter the graveyard with shovels and bags. Witnesses in the crowd agreed, saying that the brothers did so often. After this, the police hired a koji to find the woman's body and suspects. A koji is a traditional type of investigator in Pakistan who tracks footprints and other tracks at a crime scene and finds and asks witnesses about crimes in order to find a suspect. He did his job well and soon led police right to the brothers' back door. The backyard was littered with bone fragments, and as they entered the home, a small skull, likely from an animal, was the first thing police saw. It only got worse from there. When police entered the Ali brothers' home, Farman was away and Arif was sleeping. Their father and sister were home, though, so when the police smelled a foul odor coming from Farman's room, they got the key from the family and opened the door. Inside, in the middle of the room, sat a pot half-filled with meat curry. Nearby were a cooking knife, a cutting board, and a butcher's axe, the last two of which still had bits of fat hanging off of them. When the police noticed a trail of ants flowing from the curry, they followed it underneath Farman's bed. After pulling out a couple bags of fertilizer from under the bed, the cops found a burlap bag with the victim's body inside. Her legs had been chopped off, providing the meat for the curry in the center of the room. At this point, the cops arrested a reef and continued searching the property, digging up more human remains that would be returned to their graves and reburied. Farman was arrested the following day. The brothers were initially charged with concealing evidence, trespassing on burial grounds, and assaulting the religious beliefs of the locals. A terrorism charge was later added to their list of crimes. Their aunt and sister were arrested as well, but were let go after police determined they weren't involved in the crimes. Having caused a great panic in the community, the courts were eager to try them in. But before we get into the legal proceedings, let's dive a bit deeper into who they were and why they did what they did. What can make a human being want to eat another? It's a question that may never have a satisfactory answer. Still, various people, including the Ali brothers themselves, gave details that even if not trying to justify their actions, at least tried to explain them. To start, the pair's childhood is a bit of a mystery. Their ages are up in the air, with different sources reporting different ages in the range of 30 to 40 for both of them at the time of their crime, although they generally agree Farman is about 5 years older than Arif. Both brothers were likely born in the 1970s. According to Arif, his father killed his mother and tortured them as children. This story is somewhat corroborated by a cousin of theirs who says that after their mom died, a powerful feudal lord took over their land, leaving them destitute and hungry, after which their father became abusive, beating them if they asked for food. Because of this, the cousin says, the young boys turned to eating anything they could, including leaves, dead animals, and even dead children. Police tell different stories. One officer reports that the two turned to cannibalism to gain a sense of manhood after their wives left them and married other men. Their wives, as has been learned from interviews with the local inspector Bati, claim that they left the men due to the brothers frequently beating them, not working, and locking them inside the house when they left at odd hours of the night. Though the women never said so, I wonder if the brothers were already eating people's bodies back then. The most convincing story, in my opinion, is that which Arif himself confessed, sorcery. According to Arif, the pair ate human flesh at the suggestion of a sorcerer in order to cast black magic spells on their neighbors, saying that the act would make them unclean, a prerequisite to using magic. Additionally, Arif confessed to writing verses of the Quran backwards, and some locals also told police that they saw Arif meeting with a suspected magician. Although he changed his motivation at one point, saying that he did it so his children would have good lives, he maintained that sorcery was indeed his end goal. However, due to his shifting stories, what he says must be taken with a grain of salt. As for how their mom died, the details are unclear. Though Arif holds that his father killed her, neighbors say she died due to pregnancy complications, and some sources report that she died from tuberculosis. 
Like with other parts of this twisted mystery, we may never know for sure. As the boys grew older, they attended school and Farman was a good student through 10th grade when he mysteriously dropped out and started to distance himself from the community. As they continued growing, the boys reportedly kicked their father out of the house. Their sister Nusrat had a mental disability and some suspect Farman did as well, though the police arresting them specifically said the men were of sound mind. In addition to cannibalism, Arif was a heroin addict, which may have contributed to him making such an inhuman decision. Though the reasons behind their crimes may not be clear, the aftermath is very well known. After the pair was arrested, they gave conflicting stories to police. Farman said he had eaten at least five corpses over the last year and a half, starting his sick habit back in 2010. Arif initially said that while he knew what Farman was doing, he himself had nothing to do with it and that the curry was Farman's alone, but Farman said that he would notice body parts go missing when he left and believed Arif was eating them. Arif, of course, would eventually admit to his participation in the acts. The community was horrified to have cannibals amongst them. One local man said his family had stopped eating meat out of fear and that they wanted to kill the brothers for what they did. Another reports that people started visiting their dead relatives' graves daily and sealing them up with cement immediately, something that usually only happened 40 days after the deceased had died. Fear and hatred spread through the town like wildfire. The clamor against the brothers was loud, so they had to be taken away for their own safety. Some people questioned the community's response, though. After all, the Ali home had short walls, only five feet high in some parts, and it speculated that neighbors already knew what was going on. The Ali's come from an influential clan called the Rana clan, so it's possible that anyone who questioned the two were suppressed. This makes sense as some villagers report that one brother would brandish a knife at people and say that due to his influential connections, he could kill them and not go to prison. However, even if some neighbors already knew something about what was happening, the reactions are genuine, showing that they certainly didn't understand the extent of the brothers' crimes, at least in my opinion. Furthermore, it's hard to square the Rana clan's supposed influence with the feudal lord allegedly taking over their land, although it could be that, for all the Rana clan's influence, the lord was still more powerful. Following the brothers' arrest, their sister Nusret would shortly be found drowned in a nearby river, herself showing signs that she was a victim of several unspeakable crimes. Some allege it was a local imam, that is, a local leader of a mosque, who killed her. When it came time to face trial in Sargoda, the duo were quickly convicted and sentenced to two years in prison each. Many locals were enraged when they were released, protesting by shutting down roads into town and threatening their lives. They were put into protective custody and eventually settled into an unknown location, keeping a low profile and staying out of the public eye. In 2013, following their release, an interviewer from the BBC went to Darya Khan hoping to speak to the brothers. Though he didn't find them initially, he did meet their uncle, who was rather upset at the entire situation. He insisted that the brothers did not eat human flesh, but rather were victims of their neighbor's jealousy. The same interviewer found one brother, Arif, right outside Darya Khan in the same house, now abandoned, where they cooked Miss Syrah. Though he could scarcely give an answer to the interviewer's questions, Arif was hopeful that he could put the incident behind him and not do it again. Unfortunately, that wouldn't be the case. It's just a year after the interview, Arif and Farmer would be rearrested for more cannibalistic acts. In 2014, neighbors reported a foul smell coming from the brother's home. Knowing their history, police didn't waste any time conducting a raid of the home, and in it they found the most shocking thing yet, the skull of a child, estimated to be between two to three years old. Ali was arrested, and a search began for Farman, who wasn't at home during the raid. Just like last time, Arif denied involvement, but Farman confessed to the crime. The boy's identity was never determined, but police believe it was a young child who died and was buried in a nearby graveyard some time before. After investigating graveyards around the area, police came to believe the men had dug up and eaten hundreds of corpses, far more than the five Farman admitted to years ago. This time, the courts were determined to lock the men away for a long time. Though cannibalism still wasn't illegal, the prosecutor charged the men with terrorism, arguing that their actions caused legitimate fear and terror in the community. The court agreed, and so the men were each sentenced to 12 years in prison in order to pay a fine of 700,000 rupees, or 7,100 USD by the then current exchange rate. They would end up being released early in 2020 and given to the care of their uncle and another brother, although the police refused to talk to the public about it. When the courts handed down their sentence, the judge recommended that Pakistan draft anti-cannibalism laws, which lawmakers did later that year. However, the bill failed to pass, surely to the disappointment of many. Shortly after being released from prison, Arif would pass away from an unknown illness. His brother Farman was the subject of a complaint in April 2022, 11 years after his first arrest, when he was allegedly seen burning Qurans at a local graveyard, apparently still up to his black magic ways. 
His current location is unknown to the public, though the police know where he is. Only time will tell what becomes of this disturbed man. And that's it. That's the story of two brothers with crimes as mysterious as their origins. With Arif dead and Farman in hiding, all we know about the duo comes from police reports and conflicting interviews. We may never know the full story of Pakistan's first convicted cannibals, but at least we know this much. Thanks for watching. I have to give a special shout out to you slash Moondog151 on Reddit for this one. This video is based on an excellent write up he posted to r slash true crime, so if you liked it be sure to check him out. His original post is linked in the description alongside his PayPal in case you want to donate to him. He's got plenty more content about crimes that happen in different countries like this one. Sources are listed below as well. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more content. I've got tons of videos coming including true crimes, urban legends, true scary stories, creepypastas, and more. If you would like to suggest a topic or story, real or fake, written by you or otherwise, just contact me at one of the contacts below. I proofread everything, so don't worry about your grammar. Be sure to follow me on Reddit and TikTok too. I'm open to collaborations and hired work, so if you need somebody to write, record, do research, or proofread for you, I'm here. Until next time, this is Mr. Mysteries.